I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on polynomials. We'll discuss quadratic functions and their graph in this particular video. Quadratic function is a function where degree of the polynomial is 4 as given here. f of x equals to a x to the power of 4 plus bx cube plus cx square plus dx plus e could be a general form of any quadratic function. We'll discuss the characteristics of quadratic function, sketch graph, and find equation from the graph in this particular video. So as you can see from the equation itself, let me write down that the degree is 4, right? And so it gets the name quadratic. Now quadratic function graph could be uh, somewhat like shown here. It could be opening upwards, it could be opening downwards, as most polynomials do with even degree. And opening up means what? It means that the value of a is greater than 0. But if it is opening downwards, it means that the leading coefficient a is less than 0. It is negative. So in this particular case also, we have a which is greater than 0. Now these graphs are shown for three different functions whose roots are the x-intercepts shown here. So we have these x-intercepts as the roots. As you can see, we have different kinds of zeros here. We have a zero, which is kind of a turning point. So this zero here is of order four. Or you can say multiplicity. In this particular case, we have two types of zeros. One zero is with, let me write down the word multiplicity here. Both the terms order and multiplicity are extensively used, right? So in this case, we have multiplicity of one for the zero shown on the left side and multiplicity of three is a cubic kind of a zero on the right side. Here we have multiplicity or order of two. Right, so we can say we have double zero. So these are different terms which you have seen while working with polynomials. So we are going to use these terms extensively. Now let's look into the characteristics of our quadratic function. So as we have said, both sides will face on the same with whether <coughs> <coughs> now let us discuss some characteristics of our polynomial functions. So as we have seen here, the characteristics depend on the value of a. So if the value of a is greater than 0, in that case, for x approaching positive or negative infinity, the y value approaches positive infinity. For the, the value of a less than 0, for x approaching positive or negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity, right? So those are the cases. As we saw in the previous slide, now here also we have a which should be greater than 0 since it is going towards positive infinity, clear? In this case, that is what we are trying to say, going towards negative infinity, so the value of a is less than 0. Here again, the value of a is less than 0. And this is called end behavior. So, so we can write down that that is the end behavior. Critical points which we are going to consider while sketching the graph will be the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and the multiplicity of zeros. Now, with the knowledge of end behavior and the roots, we can sketch a rough graph of quadratic function. So, let us take a few examples in this particular case. We'll begin with a simple graph. The question here is to graph quadratic function f of x equals 2, x to the power of 4, minus 9. 
So here we notice that there is a translation of nine units down. So you can begin with a parent function. So we can say a parent function, which is, let's say g of x equals to x to the power of four, and then we will translate it nine units down. We could actually sketch it. The other way could be we could actually factor and then sketch it. So if you want to factor this, you're going to write the function as f of x equals to x to the power of 4 minus 9. You can have difference of squares here. So it could be written as x squared plus 3 times x squared minus 3. Now, x squared plus 3 cannot be factored, so we'll keep it as such. However, x squared minus 3, you could write as x plus square root 3 times x minus square root 3. Now, from here, you can see that we have two real roots. Correct? Now that leads to a pair of imaginary roots. So on our graph, we can actually show the real roots. So let me just make a rough sketch here. So on the coordinate plane, the graph of the function x to the power of 4 will be translated nine units down and what we are going to get is a graph with x intercepts at minus square root three and plus square root three the y intercept which is going to be the minimum also at minus nine so that is how you could sketch the graph of x to the power of four minus nine perfect you could try the question to sketch x to the power of four <coughs> minus 64 as an example. So let this be a question for you to attempt. Let's take the next example, which is sketch graph of quadratic function. Find intercepts and end behavior to sketch graph of f of x equals to x squared minus 4x minus 32 times x squared minus 3x plus 2. So we're given a product of two quadratic equations. It will lead to a quadratic equation. Let's factor them using product and sum. x squared minus 4x minus 32. We need product of minus 32 and sum of minus 4. So 4 times 8 can work for us. So it could be written as x minus 8 times x plus 4. The other quadratic equation is x squared minus 3x plus 2. 2 times 1 is 2, and negative 3 means both are negative. So we have x minus 2 times x minus 1. So in this case, the function can be written as product of four factors. So what we get here is four linear roots. Linear factors. So we get four distinct real roots. We also notice that the leading coefficient a is greater than zero. That means that for x approaching negative infinity, y will approach positive infinity. And for x approaching positive infinity, y will also approach positive in infinity. Correct? So that becomes the end behavior. Keeping that in view, we'll actually sketch the graph. So we have zeros at 8, minus 4, 2, and 1. So let me just uh, draw the x-axis. We have a 0 at 8. And so let me sketch it like this. So let's mark the zeros. Zeros on this graph will be at 8. Let's say this is 8 for us. 
uh, then we have at minus 4 so let's say this is minus 4 for us plus 2 and plus 1 let's say this is plus 1 and this is plus 2 these are the zeros all are of order 1 as far as the end behavior is concerned we notice that the leading coefficient is positive and therefore when x approaches negative or positive infinity y value approaches positive infinity since the zeros are linear we'll cross them like a straight line connecting these lines will actually provide us the right graph so we can now connect these lines as shown here Another important point to mark always on the graph is the y-intercept. So let's find the value of y-intercept. That is to say, what is the value when x is equal to 0? Substituting 0, we get minus 8 times plus 4 times minus 2 times minus 1. This is also a check. So when you multiply three negatives, you do get a negative number. And 8 times 4, 32 times 2 is 64. So negative 64 will be the y-intercept. So we can write down the y-intercept here as negative 64. Now that becomes the graph of the given function. Is that clear to you? So for sketching a quadratic function, you might have to factor and then sketch the graph as shown. Now let's look into two more questions. In this case, we'll find equation from a graph. So here we have a graph which opens upwards. We are already given a y-intercept. So in this graph, we are given y-intercept, which is not very clear. Let me write down here. The value of y-intercept is at 0, of course. It is 1.2. We can read the x-intercepts from the graph itself. There are four x-intercepts. So we have x-intercepts at x equals 2. So the first point here is minus 3, minus 1, and then we have at 1 and 2. So these are the four x-intercepts. To get the equation, we can write the function as f of x equals to a times the intercepts minus 3 will be the factor will be x plus 3 minus 1 the factor will be x plus 1 and then x minus 1 and x minus 2 will be factors for the intercepts at 1 and 2. To find the value of a we can look into the y-intercept. Now since the y-intercept is 1.2 substitute 0 for x and 1.2 for f of x. So we get 1.2 equals to a times 3 times 1 times minus 1 times minus 2. So we have 1.2 equals to a times. So when you multiply, two negatives is positive. So as expected, we are getting positive value of a. 3 times 2 is 6. So the value of a will be 1.2 divided by 6. So that gives you the value of A as 0 0.2. So we can write down the function f of x as equal to 0 0.2 times x plus 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. Perfect. So that is how you could actually get the equation from the graph by understanding what are the zeros rather the x-intercepts and their multiplicity. Let's take another example. Now that is the last example in this particular video. So once again uh, we have a graph but this time it's opening downwards so we expect the value of a to be less than zero. That's the end behavior, correct? The y-intercept here is at minus three. So let's find the equation of this particular graph. We are given four zeros once again. So the, the function can be written as 
with zeros. Let me write zeros are at x equals 2, 3, minus 3, minus 1, and again 1 and 2. So this is very similar to the previous graph except for the y-intercept at 0 minus 3. So we have the equation as f of x equals 2 x plus 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. Now these factors are from the x-intercept. To get the value of a, we'll substitute 0 for x and the y value is negative 3. So substituting 0 for x, we get a times 3 times 1 times minus 1 times minus 2. So minus 3 equals to a times 6. So minus 3 divided by 6 is the value of a, or which is minus half. And therefore, we can write the function f of x as equals to minus half times x plus 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. Right, so that is the equation of the given graph. I hope the steps are absolutely clear. So to find equation from the graph, we need to read the x and y intercepts, and then we can actually find the equation very easily as shown in these examples. So with that, we come to an end of our video, and I hope So I hope that helps. So with this, we come to an end of our video where we have learned how to sketch quadratic functions in particular, how do they look like, and what is the role of x and y intercepts in sketching the graph of quadratic function. Thanks for your time and all the best.